Davis, 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 we rep the Davis, 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 we rep the Davis, 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 we rep the boom, 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 boom. Be sure to stick around for the news segment of today's episode to understand why we now rep the Zeta. Welcome to Electrified, it's your host, Dylan Loomis. To kick off today's episode, I wanna share some details about Tesla's S&P 500 inclusion. Rob at Tesla Daily did a great job of covering the fundamentals of how this will work, so I'm just gonna add a few quick details. I'm assuming you've all watched that episode, so if you haven't, make sure you check it out. This will make a lot more sense. You're looking at a rough estimate of who is holding Tesla shares. I just want you to see the percentage of shares that retail investors hold, only about 10%. I think understanding that stock price moves are often swung by institutional investors, and this will really help a lot of people when it comes to Tesla fluctuations not always making sense. Also, Citadel is a market maker and basically they have trading technologies that connect brokers to their liquidity ecosystem. They help facilitate reliable execution of trades. I've included a link to a short video in market making in the description below if you want to learn more. But let's start with the purchase timing of the index funds. Generally speaking, most of the buying index funds do is during the days surrounding the actual inclusion. So in this case, December 21st, The thing is, most index funds are actually free to accumulate these shares they need anytime from the announcement, so November 16th, through a few weeks after the actual inclusion. However, as Rob said, Tesla's inclusion may be split in two, which would be a first, but the main point here is the purchasing of Tesla by the index funds can happen anytime from now until a few weeks after December 21st. But we can expect most of it will take place in the days surrounding December 21st, and here is why. There's this thing called dispersion risk. Index funds are meant to do what the name implies, track an index. If these funds purchase Tesla a few weeks in advance, their returns will face the risk of deviating from the index benchmark during that time, which is called dispersion risk. To keep things simple, if an index fund does not track closely to the benchmark, that's a bad thing. So to be safe, most index funds will add Tesla near the December 21st date to limit their dispersion risk. And one other thing to note here, we have the index funds that are forced to buy shares and then the active managers or non-index funds that will have the option to buy shares. To illustrate this, I'm going to share two tweets from Gary Black. With the S&P up 12% year to date, S&P index assets are 5.1 trillion and the active fund Funds that benchmark to the S&P total 7.6 trillion. The indexers are forced to buy before December 21st, but remember some can purchase a few weeks after, but most will do so before, at an estimated 1.14% weight or 122 million shares. Dropping down, he says adding Tesla to S&P means if Tesla, now this was a typo, this should not say S&P 500, if Tesla soars 400% again next year, which it has done this year, It would be a huge performance detractor and a career risk for a portfolio manager if they held no Tesla because they would be off by 4 PP or percentage points, which would get them fired, potentially. The layman's explanation here is active managers that are not inept at their jobs will buy Tesla and they should do it before December 21st ahead of the majority of the forced index buying. And the last important point to make here, a lot of people are wondering why the stock price is coming back down a bit. Institutional funds have rules in place for their portfolios. For example, ARK has a limit where they cannot hold more than 10% of their fund's assets in one stock. So if Tesla stock goes up by more than 10% in one day, they would be forced to sell shares to keep their exposure to 10% or less. And this is not just ARK. This is very common in the finance world. It's forced diversification. If you remember from the first table, Moves like this are a much bigger percentage of Tesla's float than retail investors. All right, so let's move on to some news for today. 28 companies in the EV industry have joined forces to create a new organization called Zeta, which stands for Zero Emission Transportation Association. Their goal? to push for 100% electric vehicle sales by 2030. The executive director is Joe Britton, who spent 15 years in the U.S. Senate. He said, For the first time in a generation, transportation is the leading emitter of U.S. carbon emissions. By embracing EVs, federal policymakers can help drive innovation, create hundreds of thousands of new jobs, and improve air quality and public health. Zeta's formation recognizes a pivotal moment for national leadership and reflects the will of the growing clean transportation sector. The next decade will be critical 
role in implementing federal policies that accelerate the transition to zero emissions vehicles and help address these problems head on. The clean vehicle sector already boasts hundreds of thousands of jobs, but if we encourage its growth, the U.S. can decisively win the global race to develop a new clean transportation economy and employ hundreds of thousands of Americans right here at home. So the five main goals of this lobbying group are outcome-driven consumer EV incentives, emissions and performance standards, enabling full electrification by 2030, infrastructure investments, domestic manufacturing, and federal leadership and cooperation with sub-national entities. If you'd like to learn more about this group, I've included a link below. Next up, some sources told Electric that Tesla went on a hiring spree, adding about 1,000 new people in sales and delivery positions in North America over the last two months. This is, of course, in anticipation of a crazy Q4 sales and delivery push. The source also said that Tesla's strategy is now focused on hiring part-time sales and delivery workers, presumably to match seasonal demand fluctuations. These employees do have an eventual path to a full-time role, but in in a part-time position, Tesla does not need to pay benefits or give them phones, laptops, etc. So yet another good sign for Q4. All right, so NHTSA has been investigating some Model S and X MCU touchscreen failures and have found that some have had failure rates of up to 30% and Tesla has received over 10,000 requests from owners to change their MCU. NHTSA is considering a recall here as 159,000 vehicles have been upgraded to an engineering analysis, a step that has to take place before it can ask for a recall. This investigation covers 2012 to 2018 Model S and 2016 to 2018 Model X vehicles. The problem is supposedly with the eMMC or embedded multimedia card memory, Tesla responded by offering an extended warranty, but many owners feel that this was not enough and the MCU is of course a crucial part of the vehicle. But we'll have to wait and see in the next few weeks what becomes of this investigation. CATL, one of Tesla's battery suppliers, is investing $5.1 billion for a factory in Indonesia. The agreement says they're set to break ground on the plant in 2021. As we've heard in recent weeks, Indonesia has big ambitions to become a key player in global green energy as they have been betting on their strong nickel reserves, which reportedly account for about 25% of the world's known reserves. The more battery factories on this planet, the better. And to wrap up today's episode, Energy Minister Lily D'Ambrosio announced the Andrews Ministry will invest about 797 million Australian dollars in a home energy savings package. This initiative is to encourage the shift to more smart energy efficient appliances and integrated home systems in Victoria. If you recall, about two months ago, Elon reminded us yet again that one day Tesla will be making super efficient HVAC systems. So of course, this development is probably a few years out and we won't spend much time here, but I wanted to put this on your radar that the environment in Victoria is ripe for Tesla HVAC and some of these incentives could have an impact now on things like Powerwall and solar roof demand if Tesla makes the latter available in that market. But that's gonna wrap it up for today's episode. Please take a moment to like the video if you did. Consider subscribing for more Tesla Tesla content and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. I hope that you have a great day.